Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today is October 16th. It is 6 p.m. Japan time. Japan markets today closed. The Nikkei average was down only 0.41%. You might think there's nothing going on in the stock markets right now. It's boring. It's not moving at all. Actually, no, you're wrong. There's actually a big occurrence right now in the charts. There's a few weird things going on just happened the last few days and I want to tell you why I think Japanese markets, as of right now, short term, they look a little bit dangerous. Those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan, former Wall Street guy. Please see the description below as to who I am, what I'm about. Just started YouTube this year, Japanese channel in January, and the English channel you're watching right now. Just started a few months ago. Press below to subscribe to my channel. Would appreciate your support. Today's topic, I'm going to break this down into three main themes. Number one, I feel like I need to give an update because there's just a lot of news out. Why is the market drifting a little bit lower right now? Even though it's little, 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 the markets are drifting a little bit lower. And what the heck is coming out today? Lots of news came out today. Number two, let's go into what am I looking at the charts? What am I talking about today? Why is it? What changed today with the charts that looks suspicious and dangerous for the Japanese market? And then number three, last but not least, my recommendation to you and your money going forward short term for the Japanese markets. I'm going to give a little bit of a different recommendation than normal today. So please stay tuned and watch till the end. Okay, number one, first and foremost, let's give an update. What the heck is going on? You might look at this and say, okay, there's really nothing going on here. Markets are pretty slow. Today, the US markets, they barely moved. The Dow Jones down 0.07%. No move on the day today. Europe was down yesterday. It's up today. Asian markets, very little move overall. What are you talking about, Dan? What the heck is this news? Actually, guys, there's tons of news out today. The biggest news by far, I think, actually was there was a big uh, roundtable meeting hosted by CNBC Global Economic Debate Panel on Thursday. And IMF, the World Bank, and the ECB all were part of this debate and saying that there's going to be more physical stimulus needed from every country, US, Europe, etc. We can see very strong language used from ECB chief Christine Lagarde telling CNBC, uh, the IMF World Bank panel, saying that many weapons that we have available, ranging from interest rates to forward guidance to asset purchase programs, there's going to be arsenal of economic stimulus on standby amid upsurge of coronavirus cases in Europe. Guys, as I'm sure you know today, coronavirus cases hit all time high worldwide, close to 400 thousand new cases today worldwide huge this is in my statistical if you say this is the first wave second wave this is the third wave statistically we're seeing it right now it's happening it's unfortunate but it's real and especially we're seeing big numbers in france 30,000, uk 20,000. the populations are not huge in these countries compared to the us and india so these numbers have a very big impact and likely we're going to see a lot of economic uh, damage as a result of this. The World Bank economist uh, also saying, uh, Carmen Reinhardt today, that there's a long road ahead. This is a war, and this is a war during governments finance the war expenditures however they can, one however they can. So all these top officials saying the economy is going to get worse globally. On top of that, on top of that, as we see with the uh, what's happening right now with uh, the uh, presidential election between Trump and uh, Biden right now. I'm watching this very, very carefully. Please see my uh, news today uh, on the uh, international news world news update that I gave you guys today. But uh, the polling data is getting more and more uh, in Biden's favor. Again, guys, I am bipartisan. I have to keep saying this over and over because everybody wants me to pick a side. And guys, I, I don't pick sides because, I mean, that's just who I am. Like, I don't like either candidate. And uh, for those of you guys who kept saying, okay, this is similar, the same thing happened with uh, Hillary. No, it was not the same, guys. I was watching the data during Hillary versus Trump. Uh, for those of you just to pull up these polls here, during the all the latest polls into the national poll into the last election for 2016, we're seeing here Hillary continued to have a lead over Trump for the most part, but we can see for the most part that the polls uh, conducted between Hillary and uh, Trump, we're seeing mostly the margin here, the lead 
for Hillary was single digits. It wasn't double digits we're seeing here. Multiple times polls were done for many, many different bipartisan surveys, Google consumer surveys. These are pretty bipartisan. It was single digits. Right now we're seeing Trump versus Biden. Biden has a lead. It's double digits, guys. It's over 10. And again, 538 is pretty bipartisan. If you look at other polls, we can say 11, 12 point lead, et cetera, but it's still double digits. So the chance of Biden winning is very strong, national poll wise and electoral wise. I'm looking at these charts. I'm looking at all the swing states. Still, it's a little bit of a game toss right now. Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio, but even Texas is a game toss. So, so Trump still doesn't have this 38, which is a big portion here. He, he only has electoral votes wise from what I can see 87 plus 38 so so far so uh, he barely has from what I see 120 120 oh, a little over uh, 120 electoral votes at the moment that's very very far away from 270 his chances of winning are very slim at the moment and this is going to continue to have some effects on global stock markets especially in the US as if Biden wins very strong chance that he is going to raise taxes on capital gains taxes uh, for stock markets and for basically any type of investment. So this is all weighing a little bit on the market and the market's inching, inching, inching down. Okay, so number two part of this video, what am I looking at specifically at the charts? What is uh, a little bit dangerous for Japan right now? So first and foremost, let's take a look at the Nikkei here. The Nikkei, this is the chart of the Nikkei stock index. This is one of the largest stock indices in Japan. That's kind of like the Dow. It's price weighted as the Nikkei 225. It's 225 stocks. It makes up one of the, uh, let's say the largest indices in Japan. Now looking at this, looking at the futures here, the price is currently around 23,405. You might say, okay, it's not really moving at all. This is, from what I've been saying before, trying to test a very big, uh, resistance level. This is a resistance level that it started around the June of uh, 8th period. Uh, this resistance level is around, looking at the charts here, around 23,400. So it's sitting right at the resistance level right now. This blue line that I just drew, it was a resistance level early June, again, uh, mid August, again, early September, again, end of September. And it, then it just broke out, broke out of this big resistance line. I was telling everybody, Breaking out, breaking out, it's very excited. Now it's sort of back again at this resistance line. But what am I talking about here? What is so dangerous about this chart? Guys, for those of you who don't know charts or you're new to my uh, video, please see the below description area first before you watch this. It's going to be a better use of your time. Got to understand MACD, got to understand Bolger and Band, got to understand RSI. These three are your key weapons for understanding the markets and making money. So please review those videos before uh, you listen to my analysis. So guys, assuming that you understand MACD, assuming that you understand stuff, what worries me is, so looking at the MACD and the Nikkei here, look using barometers here of 1839.13, it still hasn't crossed. Now, why am I using these barometers? Because the normal barometers right now for 12, 26, and nine, which is, this is the standard for most MACD across the world, most algorithms use it. It's very messy. I've been saying this for the Japanese markets for a while. The MACD has just been messy. It's just been squiggling around in and out. And when you see this over and over happen, it's difficult to use. It's very difficult. Now, given that it's a little bit messy, I sometimes change it. But even if you use 12, 26, 9, we see here, it looks like it's about to cross. This is what's important, guys. This blue line, which is the exponential average, about to cross the slower exponential average, which is this orange line. Again, guys, see the MACD description below, uh, MACD video below, so you can get a better idea as to what I'm talking about. But it looks like it's about to cross through, indicating that this is a perhaps dangerous situation. RSI still has not shown any signs yet. It may break 50 soon. And looking at stochastics, it already has broken. Now, looking at Bollinger Band very quickly here, we see that the Bollinger Band overall, it's sitting in the middle of its range, so it's not showing really any alarm. So the biggest alarm to me is the MACD. And what's more alarming is if you compare, let's say the Nikkei with another major stock index in Japan, which is the Topix. Topix, T-O-P-I-X, Topix. This is market cap weighted. And this is a more dangerous chart here. This looks more dangerous. 
looking at the MACD, it has clearly crossed. Now, this is squiggling around, squiggling around. It's a lot of little false indicators, so I don't really like this. This is the reason why I notched this up by about 50%. 18 uh roughly 39 and roughly let's say four five, about 13 or so and you get this now this is a little bit cleaner again it's not very clean here it's already shown a downtrend and this is kind of like a, a u shape a, a reverse u shape i don't like this this looks like a little bit of a dangerous situation and it's breaking right now this line right here which is the 50 day moving average it looks unfortunately a little bit dangerous situation what looks like what's happening right now with the topics and the Jap and the Nikkei is this big resistance level line, which it was a breakout. Originally, it was a breakout, right? It broke through this line on the topics, which was 1632. It broke through the resistance line on the Nikkei, which I said before, which was about 23400. Now it looks like that may have been what's called a false breakout. A false breakout basically means when it breaks above and we all get excited and say, oh my God, it's gonna keep going higher. But nope, it was a false breakout. Just kidding, it goes back down. Sometimes it happens in the charts, sometimes it's unfortunate. And it looks like right now, potentially it may be moving in that direction. And it potentially looks a little bit dangerous. Now we also look at, let's say, another market in Japan, the JASDAQ. Uh, this often has a lot of tech companies involved. This also, when you zoom in here, it still hasn't crossed yet for the longer term MACD. But if you put this back to normal using the global standard, which is 12, 26 and nine, then we see here that it is about to cross. It's looking quite dangerous. And finally, the mother's index. This is the smaller cap, smaller to medium companies in Japan. This also looks to me like it's a little bit dangerous, like it's about to cross. It still hasn't completely crossed, but it's looking very, very close to crossing. And this is a little bit smoother, in my opinion. One of the best looking charts that you wanna use is when it's smooth, when the lines are smooth and crossing. When it's not smooth, let's say the Nikkei here, we see here as a zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. You know, we see here, this is very, very unsmooth here. So this is a little bit, skeptical whether you can use this or not but when you look at mothers here this is much smoother and this is worrisome because it's smooth meaning that it's been quite accurate in the past and it's looking dangerous at the same time so to me this is worrisome okay another thing that to me is worrisome right now is correlation correlation again is when how two things move together it can be any types of data but when one goes up, does it go up together at the same time? Or does it, one goes up and the other goes down? When they move together, it's called positive correlation. When they move together perfectly, correlation is one. When they move together opposite, completely perfectly together, when one goes up, one goes down, that's negative one. Most correlation for two different assets, it's somewhere between one to negative one. Now, what is so dangerous about Japanese markets and correlation right now? It's the fact to me that correlation is back positive between the Nikkei, which is the Japanese index, and the US index, which is, let's say, looking at the Dow. They're both price weighted. They're both very uh, well-watched indices, and they're both positive now. This was negative for a few weeks, and I was highlighting this to everybody saying Japanese markets they are right now not moving with U.S. markets. There is a bit of decoupling going on. The decoupling seems like it's over. That's right. It was a short-term decoupling. Now it's done. It's over. It's back into correlation positive territory. Now, do note, guys, the correlation is going down, down, down a little bit here, longer term. That's a different story for a different day. So overall, though, correlation's back positive. And why is this dangerous? Because, guys, the U.S. markets, they're going to be affected by the election. For sure, there's going to be some selling pressure before the election, for sure. The MACD hasn't crossed yet. But, guys, I've been through, I don't know, I've been watching elections for 20 years. And I've been watching markets professionally for 14 years. They have always been volatile the last one or two weeks into election. And when there's volatility and uncertainty in the U.S. markets, we're seeing here that the correlation, it's going to also affect Japanese markets. So this is quite worrisome. Last point that I want to point out, guys, is positioning. 
positioning means how many people are buying Japanese stocks. Nikkei, let's look specifically at the Nikkei futures. Right now, looking at net positioning right now, non-commercial positioning on the CME, on the Nikkei, we see here, it's actually quite low. It's actually as low as it was during the bottom of the stock market on March 24th. That's quite low here. Quite, quite low. Not as low as it was during 2018 or 2016, at, you know, during when the markets are crashing, but it's quite low right now. So I have to take this into account right now that right now positioning is actually a little bit low. Maybe it won't crash, but it's looking dangerous, but it looks like it won't crash. Listening to this, what's my recommendation to you and your money going forward? What should you do with your money? As usual, guys, this is my recommendation. Take it with a grain of salt. Make your own decisions at the end of the day. I'm one YouTuber. And at the end of the day, guys, try to read the descriptions below. Understand what I'm saying. The analysis is more important than the idea. So please keep that in mind. My recommendation for you right now is this is a very difficult situation. <laughs> and it's very difficult because, number one, there's a lot of news out right now. A lot of news about tons of new news about a new uh, financial crisis that's going to emerge. Coronavirus cases are jumping all over the world right now. And this is probably going to cause something of a new, let's say, physical stimulus that it gets involved. Very, very weird situation. We don't know what's going to happen. The election in the U.S., a lot of weird situation. My first advice to you ignore all this news you're like what why did you just talk about this news ignore it because most of it it's just noise we don't know what's going to happen we don't know what's going to happen whether there's really going to be a next financial crisis we don't know what's going to happen with coronavirus we don't know what's going to happen with trump versus biden but guys the market prices this in that's why it is the markets so don't worry about this news second piece of advice to you regarding specifically what to do with japanese stocks it does look dangerous right now. It does look quite dangerous. Uh, things are starting to cross here. Things are starting to look like it's going to quite go down. But the positioning is low. Positioning is low. Indicating it's probably not going to crash. But just because it's not going to crash, that doesn't mean we shouldn't do anything. Just sit around. It's probably going to go a little bit lower. So this is right now, I think, a time to be continuing to trim your positions, especially in, let's say, Japanese banks, which I've been talking about 1615. I recommended to initially buy this around here early August at 114. It was zoomed up. And then when it started to go down here and the MACD started to cross, I said sell about half here just to be, just to be safe here, sell about half. Now I'm saying right here, I think you'd sell the remaining, let's say about one quarter. So you're only left with a small position, 25% of what you originally bought and just sit and just do nothing with that small position. If you haven't bought anything in Japan yet, then right now is a great time to do nothing, watch and wait. Be a lion, sit and wait for a good time to hunt. Right now is not a good time to hunt because we're seeing a lot of noise overall going on. We don't know what's going to happen the next two weeks. All of a sudden, there could be new news about Biden, new news about Trump, new news about coronavirus. And then on top of that, right now, Japanese markets are trending down, but the volume is so, the, the positioning is so low that one piece of news could come out and then the trend could suddenly move up. Right now is a good time to do nothing if you have no stocks. If you do have some stocks, then you trim your positions, whether it's long or short, hedges or no hedges, trim decrease increase cash that's my recommendation right now thanks for watching my video guys please press the button subscribe below also if you enjoy the content please press the thumbs up button below i would appreciate your support thanks guys have a great week have a great day see you guys later